Hello, everyone. Monet and I will be in Los Angeles, California on my 5th at Cinco de Mayo Ooh. at the Netflix Dark Festival. Oh, girl, Bob, I'm going to be so, I'm going to get away. I'm, I'm going to be just drinking mar one margarita. I'll be shaking my ass. I'll be drinking you two. You do it after work? Would it, would, it, would it kill you? No. Okay. This is, you don't tell me how to be, I can choose how I get to behave at work. You don't tell me how to behave at work. I do what I want at work. Okay. So you be sober if you want to. I'm going to be drunk. A little yeah, wasted. That scans for you. That <laughs> scans for you, honey. So we'll see you all. Come see me and my 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 professional co-worker on May 5th. <laughs> you can go to seethedragqueen.com. Professional. Are you looking for new looks to help you start a new year? Okay, Rakuten is an online shopping platform that rewards you for shopping. Rakuten gives you cash, baby, cash. It gives you cash back when you shop at thousands of brands across almost every category, from apparel to shoes to home essentials and more. Rakuten is the smartest way to save money when you shop. Get cash back for 3,500 stores across every single category, including fashion, beauty, electronics, home essentials, travel, dining, and so much more. You are already shopping y'all so why not say it while you're doing it membership is free and it's easy to sign up rakuten deposits your cash back directly into your paypal account or they can send you a check i love 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 rakuten because it helps me get great deals on my favorite brands like fenty beauty adidas crocs girl it's everything start all of your shopping at rakuten your cash back adds up Rakuten has 15 million members who are already saving, so you get the free Rakuten app and download the free browser extension. Rakuten also finds you the best deals, sales, and coupons. They do the work of searching for coupon codes, so you save time and money, things that are very valuable. You can stack cash back on top of other deals like store sales and credit card points, too. Cashback rates change daily. Start all your shopping at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app and start saving today. Your cashback really adds up. Everyone, we are here with uh, Mistress Isabel Brooks, the heavyweight champion of Texas herself. Are you still in Texas, or did you do the, did, or did you do the RDR and move to LA like all the other girls? No, I'm here in Houston, Texas. You know, I'm finally home off of work the world. I've been gone for five months, so I'm finally trying to, like, get in the normalcy of being home. But I considered it, honestly, I wanted to move to L.A. because I wanted to start my YouTube journey and do a whole bunch of other content. And it's just easier to be around the girls. But then I was like, let me just stay my ass home because it's nothing but trouble over there. <laughs> and you're not wrong. I mean, never count it out. Go to L.A., don't go to L.A., rent a room in L.A. and rent a room. Instead of getting, like, one big fierce place, just rent a small room, you know? That's that's what I did for a long time in L.A., and um, and now I live there and, and you know, not anywhere else. Um, but we are going to be reviewing episode four of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16 here on Sibling Watchery. And I got to say, I don't know who's writing comedy over at RDR. But we need, are the writers still on strike? <laughs> we, we need, and this may be harsh, but we need a revamp. Wait, but before you continue, you have to give like a little disclaimer. If you work at World of Wonder, RuPaul's Drag Race, MTV, Viacom, you have to click off the video. This video content is not for you. This is like, this is a legally binding contract, okay? It's a verbal agreement. If you work for them, you got to click off. This is not for you. You can't, you can't watch this, RuPaul. Stop watching RuPaul. I know you're obsessed. Stop watching this video. But um, it's garbage. It's garbage. I can't. Let's just, before we even get there, let's just start with the fallout. So Geneva thinks, so Geneva just, okay, Geneva's a little bit shadier than I thought. I don't know. I, Geneva's like revealing things to me as she goes in. And like, she walks in, she's like, I think Mirage should have been in the bottom. Why did you need to share that? <laughs> She's a Texas queen, so I knew I actually know quite a few of the girls before they're on Drag Race, and I used to compete with Geneva in pageants before, and that's just how the the girls are in Texas. So like they they just they 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 deflect, even if you were hot garbage. She's like, I thought she should have been in the bottom. It's like, girl, ooh. like who said and that? I also, for the record, I don't think Mariah should have been in the bottom last week, and I am quite frankly devastated that she's gone home this week. Spoiler alert. Um, I was really. 
we will we will get to that. We will get mm-hmm. to that. Um, but yeah, Geneva just really wanted us at home at home to know that Mirage should have been in the bottom. And then Q, it seems like Q might be throwing some shade at Nymphia because she's like, well, I think I should have won because mine had unconventional materials and I got perfect critiques. And I part of me wants to be like, I feel like you all are under this assumption that a design challenge means either sewing challenge or you're, you're trying to get it to your own parameters. They didn't say you they didn't say you had to use unconventional materials. You chose to use unconventional they gave you men's clothes and you chose to do unconventional materials. So why are you gagging? See, that's why I was thinking when Geneva said it though. Like Geneva, like, okay, the outfit that Geneva made, girl, it was like yeah. a super, super, super basic. But she was like, girl, if they didn't want us to use the stretch fabrics, they wouldn't have provided the stretch fabrics. Girl, vary that. Why would I like why complicate things? But I also get it because Q wanted to show out. That's why she was evil. This is, but also, but the thing about, I mean, I know we're not reviewing last week's episode, but like, girl, I think like 80% of the outfit was the stretch fabric. It's supposed to be like, use this menswear. And then it was like a big tube with a little hair and a little hair. That, that's, that's, she was wearing a cocoon, like Jasmine Masters. I mean, at this point, basically. <laughs> and, okay, did, did I miss something? Did, did playing Jane cry last episode? <laughs> she was crying. When, when did I well, miss you know, that? You know, multiple of them were crying. You didn't see that. You missed that part. When was I watched the whole thing? How did At I miss it? At the very end, they were like, they started crying. They were like, oh, we know Bob's gonna gaslight us and talk shit on sibling rivalry and stuff like that. So I think they all were crying, but then they edited it out. I don't know. Maybe this wasn't on what? your part of the screen, but <laughs> I saw it. Maybe maybe Wonder Woman sends me a different cut. They know my IP address. Yeah. They sent me a different cut. <laughs> But I was like, why does Plain Jane have tears streaming down her face? Like, what happened? I mean, it was like it was the first elimination. Maybe the girls were like were like crying and they're like <laughs> they were they were sad for her. Yeah, I mean I had I had a I had a real intense boo-hoo, the episode that Acid Betty went home. It never really made the air. But when you're on drag race, y'all don't know, man. It's this show is fucking stressful. Like I can't mm-hmm impress upon you how truly stressful RuPaul's Drag Race is. And you're there and you're like, I'm going to be chill. I'll never cry. And then you get there and you're like, I'm fucked up. This shit is fucking stressing me out. I'm not eating like I normally eat. I'm only drinking Red Bull. I'm chugging Red Bulls. Pounding Red Bulls. They're available. Red Bulls are available to you anytime. If you just will hold your head out, a Red Bull will just land in your hand. You know what I mean? Um, some girls are Look, drinking. I saw how she sucked in like that. She meant Red Bull or a bump. <laughs> I mean, listen, a little, a little a red bump. No, imagine me high on Coke. Um, and then also, I don't drink, but I know that some girls were... Also, here's the thing. When you don't drink, a little secret when going into RuPaul's Drag Race, when you don't drink, you can gain leverage with your co-hosts, with your, with your cohorts and your, and your competitors because you only get one drink. But if I say, oh, I would like a drink, I can give my drink to someone else. So, so, but didn't they switch from like full alcohol drinks to the House of Love cocktails? Yeah, but House of Love cocktails are not a joke. Girl, I saw. Have, have you have you seen the alcohol? If you just look at the alcohol content in the House of Love, it is it is like twice as strong as a beer. Yeah, the House of Love cocktails will get you together. Yeah, I mean, but I also think- like I don't know. Like for me, when I was at when I was at Drag Race, which was quite recently, they 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 had like extra drinks on the table because like we had more than one. Yeah, they're, they're trying to promote. I think they're trying to promote. They're trying to promote the House of Love. They're like, we don't care if these bitches get fucked up. Just as long no, as we literally. sell some fucking House of Love, as long as we sell this this fucking sugar water, we don't give a fuck. <laughs> this sugar water with vodka in it. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Um, and then um, Safira. So okay, so they're all trying to. So then RuPaul comes in and announces that they're going to be doing RDR Live, which is their version of uh, Saturday Night Live, obviously. And I'm immediately concerned. Immediately concerned. Because concerned? Because I know how the comedy writing has been on Drag Race in the past <laughs> seasons. And for me... Girl, I thought you meant concern for the girls, like on their behalf. Girl, you're concerned, concerned for, for the girl. <laughs> concerned for me as a viewer. I'm concerned for the audience. Because tell me about if I'm wrong. Drag Race is its funniest when the girls improv and when the girls write. When the girls make up the stuff, those are actually the funniest moments. Not when they're handed these scripts. Agreed. And like we think about Snatch Game or 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 just or even within the confines of the scripts, 
whenever someone steps out and does their own thing, that's when it ends up being the best version that people are like gagging over and whatnot. Mm hmm. Yeah, because I feel like I don't I don't know, like I don't want to say maybe like the writers are like the writers are are the gays who know like Barbara Streisand and they're, they're just older and they have a different mindset, I think. And I feel like the younger generation wants to see like different references on Drag Race because I feel like half the time, like, for instance, why are we always referencing so many older like gay icons, which I mean, of course we should, but. It, I think it needs to be brought to be more current to begin with, and then the references will start to fill themselves in. Like I, mean, I, I just not, feel like there's so much missing. You're not wrong. I don't think you're wrong. It's okay to reference Cher, but we can also talk a little bit about Billie Eilish. It's mm -hmm. okay to reference Barbara Streisand, but we we could we could throw we could just have a conversation about Ice Spice. You know what I mean? They, they could have been writing about Megan's foot, and they could have been writing about a whole bunch of other stuff and mixing it in. Well, not Megan's mm -hmm. foot. You heard uh, Nikki's writing about Megan's foot. And the internet is dragging Nikki, girl. The internet said Nikki don't ever, ever talk not, shit about Not Megan. too much. Not too much. And you know, I'm neutral because I'm from Houston, so I have to ride for Megan, but I am a barb. But there, there's some foolishness and shenanigans happening. Girl, and maybe we'll do a little Patreon exclusive about that because I, didn't, I tell you what, I tell you what, I'm trying to, I will fight anybody except the barbs. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want that part. I don't no, but the barbs, the barbs or the beehive? Who rides harder? The barbs. Really? You think the so? The barbs. Yes. I, I was right now. I am bold enough to do the... I'm, I'm bold enough to scream during everybody on mute at the Beyonce concert. <laughs> but I'm not even bold enough to look sideways at Nicki Minaj on the internet because people are crazy. That is kind of true. I feel like the barbs, like, like Beehive, they'll, they'll read you and like, and like the Twitters and like get you together. The barbs are just like DMing you your address. They're like, baby, I know. I got, I got to get you together. Because Beyonce herself is like, I'm classy. And Nicki Minaj is like, I'm gutter. And they're like, well, then if she's gutter, we're gutter. Calling all barbs. End her now. No, that's, no, that's what Nicki said. Nicki said, <laughs> I, uh, married a shooter lets you niggas try to breathe loud. Like, she don't want you, she don't even want you breathing around her. If you just breathe around her, she's 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 ready to end it all. Just for uh -huh. just for doing the thing that sustains life, <laughs> she's over it. Um, she is mother. So let's go back to uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> and then this, this fucking episode, and I'm not like shitting on. I am shitting on the episode. <laughs> I it's, knew I would. I was gonna have to watch that. That's why I'm being tactful because I feel like you're about to go in. I, I feel the energy. I feel like immediately I can just see you did not like anything. Well, it, it's not that I didn't like anything. It's not that I did not like anything. It's just that I just find this writing hard to sit through. And I feel like this because they wrote the sketch and on this where only one girl has gone home. This sketch was so long, it just would never end. And I just, and I just was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. I, actually, everyone tag World of Wonder, tag RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay. So let, let's act like you're applying for the job. How would you have cleaned it? How would you have cleaned it up to make it entertaining then? What do you want to see? If I was going to be writing on for, if I was going to be writing for RuPaul's Drag Race and we were doing in the that, SNL scale, like how, what would you have done differently in this, so I, in this specific well, I certainly would have used some more. I would have. I would have made sure that the girls knew who they were. Like, you don't know Lindsey Graham. You can't be doing a Lindsey Graham bit. If you don't know Jackie Collins, don't tell a Jackie Collins joke. Like, I, I could tell Morphine didn't know who Jackie Collins was, and I was like, why are you making a Jackie Collins joke if you don't even know who Jackie Collins is? Also, Jackie Collins is a that's this reference is beyond dated. Not that Jackie Collins novels aren't. I mean, I don't know if Jackie Collins is even still writing novels or if, if she's if she's still in these pumping out her romance novels. But this is like this, this is like making a Danielle Still joke. Like we're making jokes about Danielle Still and Jackie Collins. This is this is wild. Why are we making Jackie Collins jokes? Come on. <laughs> But also, like, like, just to play devil's advocate, and I don't know if this is true for you. When I was on Drag, Drag Race, Race? Oh, we shit. they when, if they would give us a reference, like for instance, we did the um, the infomercial challenge. Is she frozen? She's frozen. Um, give it a second. <laughs> she might um, she might come so back, or she might. Oh no, there she is. It looks like she's back. Look, she's spiraling. I'm spiraling. <laughs> Why are we making? I'm, I need a fucking diet coke to get through this fucking shit. 
A Jackie Collins joke in 2024 is wild. That's wild. <laughs> I feel like when I was on Drag Race, they would give us, like, for instance, in the infomercial challenge, they showed us, like, a bunch of, like, Oprah interviews, and, like, they gave us, like, references, so I feel like it would only make sense for them to have, like, showed the girls who they were playing, but then I guess, like you said, it kind of seems like they didn't. Yeah, but we had, they showed us references, too, because there was something that Naomi didn't know and something that someone else didn't know, they showed us, but I will say this, Drag Race has not always been like this. When I was on the show, they did Ruko's Empire, which was spoof on Empire, and Empire was on the air at the time. They did Breast World on season 10. They did, um, so, and, anyway, let's just keep moving on. So, so in the midst of all of this, um, there, everyone, this is actually one of the, probably one of the most chill um, castings that I've ever seen. It's it's very, very little drama. I mean, and also, have you noticed this? When Safira puts her foot down, bitches don't talk back. Have you noticed this? Yes, we, yes. I feel like she just exudes, like, mother energy. She, You know who she gives me? Like, really, she reminds me so much of Asia O'Hara. I don't think Asia has the commanding, like, 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 bitches don't, what well, bitches don't back down. Like, Asia was going back and forth with people. Safira is not going back and forth with you. Safira said, mm-hmm. I will never, I will ne- I'm never willing to bow down. And Zuna so, you, so you're saying she's giving Malaysia Baby Doll Fox. I will baby not doll, be disrespected. <laughs> baby Doll, Baby Doll, Baby Doll. She, when she said, I will, I, I'm never willing to, back, to bow down, I don't know who she said, I don't know if it was Tsunami or someone, she just said, all right. She said what she said. She ain't gonna bow down. Mm-hmm. And she ate that up. And then even, even Mirage was like, and, and the way that, Safira is very much giving. I'm not going back and forth with you. It is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. I'm not fucking here for the bullshit. I'm here to win the motherfucking crown. It's very much giving that energy. You yeah. know? And That's definitely. And, and, and I feel like there's something about... Um, so once Mirage says, I guess I'm hosting, because because Safira was like, you, you can host. I'm going to be with the Barbaras. As soon as she said that, I was like, it's 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 a wrap. On it's, I, I love Mirage. It's gonna be a wrap because this. I, I guess I'm. We maybe you don't have a plan. <laughs> that was the part that sent me the most because I feel like any drag queen out there who ha- who is actually a working drag queen, the host. If you have a horrible host and you're on the show, the whole show is gonna be the fool. The host baby. needs to be the strongest person. It needs to be the funniest person. And that's the person going to carry everyone. And if, if the host has everybody in a good mood, then your performance will go better. And as soon as she was, like, questioning herself, I was like, girl, it's a chop. You don't the even. Just is, put the microphone down. The guy gets, sometimes the host isn't even the funniest. Sometimes they're just the most confident. Sometimes the host just has confidence. And they and they and there are some hosts in this world, and you've seen them, Mistress, and I've seen them, too. They, are, they have been telling the same seven jokes for 15 years, and they deliver those jokes with the confidence to the same audiences week after week after week. But there's so much confidence in that you you are just you are in the palm of their hands because they're keeping the show moving. And Mirage didn't seem like she was gonna be giving any level of confidence. Mm-hmm. And shout out to Bianca Del Rio, that's what she was talking about. Same jokes over and over again. How yeah. dare you disrespect your drag mother, Bob? Very also, disgusting. Stop telling everyone Bianca's my drag mom. Stop saying that. Bianca's not my fucking that, drag mom. Why do you not, say that? I, I thought that was the tea. Wow, not, drag her. I'm not drag so I'm sorry, her. Bianca. Bob said you could never be my drag mom. Babe, all the drag race fans tag me in the drag family trees. You're literally right there with Bianca. I don't understand. You're right there with Bianca. Monet's right there with Honey Davenport. It's time we just start accepting who, who our mothers are. Okay, well, Honey Davenport is is Monet's mom, and Bianca is not my fucking drag mom. She is a crazy old lady who lived up the street from me, <laughs> who has a lot of fucking cats. Um, uh-huh. so so Plasma is having a hissy fit, but like like she's Plasma is fighting by herself, like no one's fighting with Plasma. Plasma is just in the corner, just huffing and. And and she thinks that there's like this plan, and and also once you watch the sketch, you realize that she's not actually being Barbara. She's just doing like a little Barbaraisms in the Barbara Quartet, the Barbershop Quartet. But I feel like Plasma is having a whole fight. Like it's a quote Megan the Stallion: any, "Any beef got any hoe got beef with me is beefing by herself." Plasma <laughs> is beefing alone in a corner, and at any opportunity, she's complaining about it. Maybe she was to quote who? Meg. 
Megan Thee Stallion. Not, not you choosing sides. Oh my God. Oh. Jacob, Jacob, uh, again, look, there she goes, choosing sides. Barb's calling all Barb's. Bob just put her foot down, literally. She said she's she's part of this. Foot. Baby, she's a horsey. She's a foot. horsey. Wow, not foot. Wow. Too soon. That's crazy. No, I feel like that's like a that shows like when you're at drag race, you're overthinking. That's why it's best to just go in and just like have a good time. If you overthink, you're gonna get in your head. That's that's exactly what's happening for Plasma and for Mirage. Like, baby, you just gotta go for it and do it. Yeah, Plasma thinks that the girls are cahooting against her to 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 bring her down, and she's like, and we've had we've had this conversation on drag race many times. But I have so much reverence for Barbara Streisand. I just I can't. I don't have the possibility to even twist my body to even make a possible single joke because she was in Funny Girl and she was and she was in I can get it for you wholesale on Broadway when she was nineteen years old, and then she directed Yentl and she was in Yentl and she did drag. She was she was doing drag in Yentl, and then and then she I was like, girl. The, we weren't calling Barbara Streisand a bitch and a slut. You were literally just singing songs while saying you're number. Like, no one's making fun of Barbara, baby. Just sing the songs. But, but also, this is a prime example to show that I personally don't think that Plain Jane is truly a villain. Because, like, if I was there and I and I felt that energy, I would have been like, girl, they're trying to get you to not do Barbara. They're saying you're a nasty, big-nosed bitch. Do not do Barbara. And I would, I would just be, where's my spoon at, girl? I'll be stirring the yeah, pot. I, I don't, I don't, and why do y'all say she's like Barbara? What is it about her that y'all think she <laughs> would be so good at Barbara? I'm just wondering what it is. Um, yeah, but I'd be like, also, wow. Not... Did you see the um, the uh, next week's, on next week's episode? Uh-uh. Maybe Give you it to always me. have to stick around for the on next week's episode. I don't know what the fuck is going on with playing Jane. But, like, leave Amanda the fuck alone. What the fuck is like? What is your problem? What is your fucking? We actually need to go back to that. So, so <laughs> I skipped that note. So Amanda and Plain Jane are like, is it is it over? Are we still talking Wait, about I have, her? I have it right here. What's with this? I have more respect for you than I had to do with Amanda. Like, where is this coming from? Get her, girl. Get her ass. We're starting at the beginning. Sorry. It's a shirt. I definitely have more respect for you than I do for Amanda. Why are you such a cunt? What's with this? I have more respect for you than I had to do with Amanda. Like, where is this coming from? Get her, girl. Get her. Ass. So, like, so, 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 playing Jane in the type of episode is like, it's like, I'm sorry, I was drinking, which, by the way, lame excuse. Like, lame excuse. But what I respect is that Amanda's not backing down. Amanda's like, I don't mm-hmm. care about your apology. You're, you're, it wasn't warranted. And, like, you don't get to, like, diss me, drag me, and then come back and beg my forgiveness. And then I just give it to you. No, girl. Fuck you all the well, way. Yeah, that's why. That's why they're calling her a mandatory reading, baby. Because she oh, is. Yeah, she's she's clear. Is what they're saying. <laughs> baby on Twitter, she's a mandatory reading. That I like. I mean, I feel like it, the the way I see it is, I think Plain Jane is going for the weakest link in in, what, in her mind, what she thinks, and I'm glad that Amanda's biting back and biting back because, I mean, I see both sides of the coin, but I also think the girls maybe feel like they're like. This is why I don't like when drag queens go on drag race and like overproduce. Either like just be yourself and like don't go and attack people. That's not really your thing. But I'm starting to think that maybe this really is plain Jane's thing. Maybe she just is a girl who just spews off. And yeah, maybe you know, I'm a, I don't like it, but I'm going to keep eating it. Yeah, maybe this is her thing, but her thing is just kind of crummy. Like it's just that her thing just isn't good. But a mandatory get it. She better get into this a mandatory reading. That is fucking fierce. Mm-hmm. I'm obsessed with that. <laughs> but also, what Amanda doesn't what what, what playing game doesn't realize is, baby, this is still TV. You are setting yourself up for a prime moment where a mandatory meeting has an opportunity to send you the fuck home. How poetic for you to bully this bitch all season long. And then your first slip up, you're both in the bottom together. And we've seen Plain Jane perform. It's not giving anything particularly remarkable when she lip syncs. I don't, I don't she remember. does have immunity, though, doesn't she? She does have See, immunity. If I, if I was playing the game and I was playing Jane, what I would do, I would read Amanda for filth. And then, like, the next episode after everyone's mad for me reading her, I would be like, you know what, girl? Please forgive me. When she's in the bottom, I'll use my immunity on her. And I'd be like, let's just be sisters. And like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean I to mean, do that, it. That's the redemption arc. That is that, that's that Omarosa. When for those of you who watch House of Villains, when Omarosa voted at the very, very end 
for uh, um for uh what's her name from Bad Club? T- yeah, Tanisha. Everyone's like, I'm a Russell's voting for Tanisha. This is crazy. That would be very much that tease. That's a real villain right there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so th- that just that, that that's what's going on, and I feel like like plasma's ang- plasma's hasty fit is so lukewarm because no one's it doesn't involve anyone. It's just plasma by herself having a, a hissy fit. And also this weird thing where M- Megami keeps trying to like align herself with plain Jane. And I'm like, of all people, why her? You could align yourself with anyone in this room. You could align yourself with anyone. Why are you like, we're both the dumb bimbo sluts. And I don't feel like Megami has shown us anything that says that her drag persona is like a dumb slut. Yeah, if like if I was there and after I saw her like protect protect drag like little talent show, I would say she's more like a Nina West like toe sucker kind of girl like a little Disney like cutesy. <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, I had to clear my throat. Nina West toe sucker. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, um, but also she seems to be giving this like, she's like, I'm goth, I'm a cosplay, I'm a nerd. But now all of a sudden, when you got near Plain Jane, now you're a dumb bimbo? Like, wait, what? Where did that come? How did you become a bimbo? Where's where's this? I thought you were the cosplay nerd. I thought you were the protect drag kid. I thought you were the protect drag girl. And now you're the, I'm a dumb bimbo. And she keeps saying, like, I just want to show them how dumb I am. I'm like, I'm like, where did this stop? The, the, let's make drag smart again. Can, can, can we? <laughs> that's my new thing is make drag smart again. This dumb insurgence in drag, I'm over it. St- stop trying to be dumb. Y'all, if you're not a dumb bitch, don't you're not you can't be a dumb bitch. You can't force yourself to be a dumb bitch. Y'all, it's, it's people try pretending to be dumb or acting dumb when you're not dumb. It, it takes a lot of skill to pull off a lady bunny. Pulling off a lady bunny takes a lot of craft. It's not just burger finger. It's not just I have big boobs. What Jimbo is doing is truly artful. It's not just acting like a dumb bimbo slut. It's actually much smarter than that, guys. So can we please make drag smart again? I'm in a mood today, mistress. Wow. So you're saying the queen who's wearing the Sasha Valor crown and her confessional is not smart? What, what I'm saying is, no, she's the one wow. telling us she's dumb. She's the one telling us she's dumb. I'm dumb. Was well, bitch, stop being dumb. Start being <laughs> fucking smart, bitch. She wants she, to show them she's dumb. I'm like, bitch, we believe you. Like, let's see the next. Let's <laughs> on to the next phase. Yeah, can we... <laughs> Can we keep it fucking pushing? So RuPaul comes in and she's like, oh, the, the walkthrough guest is Ross Matthews, which I my, I wanted, my first thought was Ross. But then my second thought was Ross actually is funny. Like Ross has a if you go through Ross's history as a TV personality, Ross started as like the intern, which was kind of like this like character that he played with Conan O'Brien. And it was truly genuinely Hilarious. Ross does have a great understanding of comedic timing. So my first thought was like, why is there, why is Ross there? But my second, but because Ross plays this more, much more sincere entity now on TV. It's much less about the the jokes and the and the whatever, even though he is the hilarious Ross Matthews. Um, which is why people, which why I think people are kind of like don't understand why RuPaul's saying that, because he doesn't do what he used to do back when he was Ross the intern. You're a little young, so you probably don't remember him as Ross the intern, do you? Mm-mm. I don't even remember him from Ross from Drag Race. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Ross Ross Matthews used to be like this, like, he was almost like, people couldn't believe how gay he was. It was like, how is anyone this gay? And then he just kind of like rose to fame. And I, and I feel like at one point, Jacob, can you Google this? I feel like he was hosting like extreme home makeovers with Ty at some point. Like Ross has had such an odd and interesting career that started in the comedy space and then went through the reality TV space. And now he's in this like earnest. He's the original influencer is what I'm hearing. He was the I first mean, one to hustle low the key. game. Low yeah. key. Yeah. Did she freeze? She froze. She froze. You know, this is where... Oh, she's back. She's back. 
We did. I mean, low key, he is the original influencer. Low key. Um. So so um. Now so Maya. Now Maya's saying it. Maya's like, I want to show you that I can be stupid too, guys. Stupid and dumb. This is it's, it's contagious. Why, Maya? Why are you saying this now? Why is <laughs> what in in four episodes? Maya wants to be stupid. Uh, Megami wants to be stupid. Um, Plain Jane wants to fucking be stupid. How is this stupid shit spreading so fiercely and quickly? And Jimbo, I do blame you. Jimbo, <laughs> I do blame you. Like. I think the girls just think that Drag Race has a formula, and that's why it's it, it, it. But that's good though, because everyone wants to do that. So now the the girls who are more thought out and the smarter girls will come to the forefront and take over. Fingers but crossed, you, at least. You know what it is though? They they look at winners and they think to themselves. They think that doesn't mean it is. They think that it will be harder to do what Sasha Colby's doing, and they're like, what Jimbo's doing looks easier. And they both won. And I don't think I can do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this one. because. So they look at what Jimbo's doing. They look at what Willow Pill's doing. And they're like, that's easy. I can do that. That's easy. But it's actually not easy. Now you're sitting here saying what Jimbo do or Willow do is easy. You, no. The, you, these are the said. kind of girls you have to watch who be sneak reading. <laughs> Bob is the new one. She's a mandatory reading right now. It's she said, yeah, like. What Sasha does is hard and amazing, but like Willow Pill and, and Jimbo, I mean, it's just so easy and attainable. Wow. That is so crazy. The girls, the girls look at it and think it's easy, but what Willow Pill and, and, and um, Jimbo are doing is actually much more artful and much more, has a lot more craft to it than they realize. So they're just like, mm -hmm. I'll just do that. But we see it with girls doing crunchy cartwheels. You see a girl do cartwheels, you try to do a cartwheel, your cartwheel's crunchy. You see girls try to do a dance, your dance is crunchy. And it's the same with this comedy. But but somehow Drag Race has gotten to the point where they're they're really rewarding this bad comedy because they're writing bad comedy. And maybe they can't decipher the difference between the good stuff and the bad stuff anymore. But also, like, so first of all, I've known Maya for years. Uh, me and Maya have worked together. And we, we've done a lot of things together. And she's like, I want them to see I'm stupid. Baby, you were in gymnastics? Uh no, me and my cousin, we would just out flip. Baby, we 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 believe you. We already believe you have what it takes to be dumb, bitch. Me and my cousin was out flipping. Oh wow, girl, if I was there, I would have lost my shit on stage. And and why are, are you, you shy? No. <laughs> but also, why do they so desperately want? I want to prove how dumb I am. This y'all. This sounds crazy that you're right that's I, you're right about this shit if you want to prove you're dumb bitch i bitch i i believe you are dumb for real i believe you when people when people show you who they are believe them that was on maya angelou not maya mom yeah, page yeah. Honey. <laughs> also you know someone said wait who said this girl's not trying to prove she's dumb, but this was one of this was one of the weirdest thing I ever heard in my life. I had to remember. I'm not worried about this because I, when I was a cashier, I had to remember the fruits and vegetables. <laughs> not too much on Geneva. I'm a, I'm a always right for the Texas girl. She was memorizing them barcodes. You know, it's easy. She the fruits and vegetables will equal the jokes. I I, I see what she was going for. But did it? Did it equal <laughs> jokes? Did the fruits and vegetables? How did that work out? How did that work out for Geneva Carr? How did oh that work God. out? Are you looking for new looks to help you start a new year? Okay, Rakuten is an online shopping platform that rewards you for shopping. Rakuten gives you cash, baby, cash. It gives you cash back when you shop at thousands of brands across almost every category, from apparel to shoes to home essentials and more. Rakuten is the smartest way to save money when you shop. Get cash back for 3,500 stores across every single category, including fashion, beauty, electronics, home essentials, travel, dining, and so much more. You are already shopping y'all so why not say while you're doing it membership is free and it's easy to sign up rakuten deposits your cash back directly into your paypal account or they can send you a check i love 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 rakuten because it helps me get great deals on my favorite brands like fenty beauty adidas crocs girl it's everything start all of your shopping at rakuten your cash back adds up 
Rakuten has 15 million members who are already saving. So you get the free Rakuten app and download the free browser extension. Rakuten also finds you the best deals, sales, and coupons. They do the work of searching for coupon codes so you save time and money. Things that are very valuable. You can stack cash back on top of other deals like store sales and credit card points too. Cashback rates change daily. Start all your shopping at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app and start saving today. Your cashback really adds up. Um, and Sephira, Sephira seems like she is somehow like the antithesis of drama. Somehow it seems like drama can't swarm around her because even even when even when 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 they were trying to get it in there and they were like is this sneaky she's like no it's not sneaky <laughs> i just thought to myself i could host and i thought oh it might be easy to be in a group so i chose to do that instead like you cannot put safira in drama she just is the antithesis of it she's the anecdote to drama she's not going to go back and forth with you not even not even rupaul and, Ma- and, and ross matthews <laughs> no how do you feel about the night of a thousand shares as a runway I understand why, but I, I I wish it was like I wish it would have been a Bob Mackey runway. I think that would have been like a little Ooh. more. I th- I think that's what it should have encompassed. Because yeah, but- also again, I I love Cher. I'm I'm a you know I'm an old school drag diva, but a lot of Cher's references were very different for that age. Like there's a lot of like cultural appropriation, like other stuff surrounding that kind of thing. So I feel I like that limited that. a lot of what could have been done. So I feel like it should have been Bob Mackey inspired. Yeah, she had Nymphia out here being like, I'm Egyptian. You're not. <laughs> yeah. And also, when Mirage um, revealed that she was indigenous, I was like, baby, you were the only one who could have pulled off several of these looks. Like, you didn't even do the look that you could have done. Yeah. It's like, not, not reveal. <laughs> but you said. Reveal. Well, she revealed. You said, you said like she took off a big tool coat and said, I'm indigenous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm indigenous, bitch. <laughs> She did the indigenous if reveal. If I feel anything, you said I want to be indigenous, bitch. Honey. Um, I mean, I, 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 Cher obviously does a lot of iconic looks. And we've done, maybe it is time, maybe, maybe, hear me out. Maybe this is the last night of a thousands. Maybe it's now time to shift it. Maybe this idea of like, this idea of centering around some of these designers, like you said, Bob Mackie, like, you know, Mackie me proud. I'm just naming what they would probably name it, you know. Um do something like Mugler. Mugler just Terry, uh, Terry Mugler just passed away uh, uh, a year and a half a year ago. Let's do a night inspired by Mugler. Let's let's pay tribute to mm-hmm. Mugler. Let's pay tribute to some of these people who have been highlighting drag queens and queer people and and queer icons for the past couple of decades and give them a moment because they are always kind of in the in the background. Bob Mackie's always in the background. Also, fun fact: Bob Mackie is the first ever extra special guest judge in the history of RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh wow, like that team. So let's get into the makeup. So while they're getting ready, uh, Geneva and Tsunami talk about being dreamers. They are DACA babies, um, which um, I, I, I love they had the conversation. It was really, it was actually really emotional. And I, I can imagine how um, intense it feels to have your, it's not quite citizenship, but have your your ability to stay in the country and work in the country kind of like feel like it's always dangling over your head. And you don't know if you're going to be able to stay here. And if you and if the wrong person gets in office, then you feel like you're going to be like, literally chased down by ice and thrown out of the country and sent a place that you haven't lived for over 20 years, a place that you're not familiar with because you grew up in America. You know what I mean? And like, like um, yeah. Geneva says she got here when she was six years old. So obviously if she's in her twenties or thirties or however old, she's probably in her twenties. She looks pretty young. If Geneva's in her twenties now or whatever she is, obviously her identity and her formative years were spent in America, in Brownsville. So like to throw someone to a country that they, that even though, even though they are from there, they didn't grow up in and they, you lose all your, everything, your friends, your family, your home. That, that is, that is scary. I cannot imagine what that must be like. Yeah. And it's even worse because like, so I'm from Texas, of course, and, and Brownsville where Geneva's from borders right on Mexico. Like literally you can cross over to go right to Mexico. So there's a lot of people who are like in our community who, who are DACA and who a lot of people who don't have citizenship. And the thing with, with DACA is like kind of what they were saying, which I'm glad they touched base on. Basically to be a dreamer, you have to be a perfect citizen. Like any little thing you do, if you get like a DUI, if you get arrested, they could take your, your citizenship and it's nothing to them. Like they yeah. literally be like, bitch, bye. So it is a scary thing, and I mean, I'm I'm happy for the both of them that they get to experience and follow their dreams and and hold it down and do what they want to do. 
Yeah, if you ever have any friends who are um, either here on a, on a green card or on a work visa or anything, they be scared. They be like, like, like you be like, let's jump this fence. They be like, bitch, I'm not jumping no, 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 no motherfucking nothing. We gonna walk around this. We gonna open mm-hmm. the gate. We gonna ask permission because they will send my ass back to wherever the hell they think I came from, wherever the hell I came from. They will send me back quickly. So everybody here needs to fucking get their shit together, get in line, and act right because I ain't getting fucking my shit fucked up mm-hmm. for y'all. I have noticed that. Um, do you do you follow anyone? Do you follow any OnlyFans creators? <laughs> so I used to be known for my legendary Twitter spaces where I would actually review the porn stars like OnlyFans live for everyone on the space. So I've never subscribed, but I've been gifted. I've been gifted a lot of people. I don't really consume porn. I like I actually was having this conversation on Twitter the other day. I feel like it's weird for me when you know people and I, I'm some friends with so many creators. It's like. I feel like it just worked for them. So I, it, it, I, porn's all about the fantasy. I don't feel the fantasy for them. Couldn't be me. Because let me tell you right now, I might be keeping only fans in business personally. My <laughs> How many? Though. How many do you subscribe to, though? Well, I always subscribe. Then I, I never stay subscribed. I subscribe and then immediately unsubscribe because otherwise I will forget that I have them and I've subscribed to so many. So I, I probably subscribe within a month to maybe like anywhere from five to ten different only fans. So like maybe. Okay. Anywhere, Anywhere from like a fifty to 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 like eighty dollars a month on OnlyFans subscriptions. Okay, not too bad. Yeah. Um, do you follow? Have you followed any of the Rue girls on OnlyFans? Girl, hell tell no. the motherfucking truth. Tell the motherfucking truth. I have never, but actually, I should. Maybe that'd be a cute little a cute little one too. Well, shout but when out she to- said okay, when a mandatory reading said that that was her job, I was like, I'm kind of jealous. I would love that job. Well, like flirting with these fucking straight boys who think they're flirting with Yes, like reply to the messages. I already do that. I already like play. I mean, it does sound really fun, actually. And and and, and it probably get pays well because these these OnlyFans girls, they make a lot of motherfucking money. They make a lot of money. Also, shout out to the girl to the Rue girls with OnlyFans. Uh shout out to Dahlia Sin has a I'm a, one of the best ones. You gotta go check out Dahlia Sin's OnlyFans. I really, I really 10 out of 10 recommend. Have you seen Naomi's? Naomi doesn't have OnlyFans, does she? She's just starting one. Oh, I've not seen it. Have no. you seen Blair St. Clair's? No, I've not seen Blair's either, no. Mm-mm. No. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't looked at looked at any Rue Girl OnlyFans in probably in, in like a, maybe like a year or so. So anyone who started one in the past year, I have not seen theirs. Yeah. Um, I already wrote, I don't think Morphe knows. Okay, Gen- Geneva was really uncomfortable. Like, watching Geneva was... I don't know. She, first of all, she kind of looked like a clown, like literally, like like she kind of was acting like bozo. The hit and, <laughs> but also like if you don't know anything, like why was anyone like girl? What are you doing? What is this? I I think that she was just like I said. I feel like the girl stick has a formula, so maybe she thought it, the best thing was to be over the top and like she didn't know the references either. You have to remember that, so it's kind of like. What what should she give? And that cold open, but also she was like, she's like, I don't have, I don't know, I don't know how to do a southern accent. But you live in Texas, you can't find someone who has a fucking accent in Texas. And all of the bitch, you don't never come across the accent in Texas. Oh okay, oh okay, sure, Mary, <laughs> bitch, figure out how to do a motherfucking southern accent. You live in Texas, Mary. Um, she don't know a southern accent, and Plastique don't know Beyonce. <laughs> and, 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 and Kim used to act like she, Kim used to always act like you know when we were on Drag Race everything that would happen Kim would be like I was, I was living in Korea at the time my favorite one where they were like Kim you never seen the movie Pitch Perfect Kim goes no I was living in Korea at the time and, and RuPaul was like well it came out last year so <laughs> <laughs> Kim was like oh oh you ate that you ate that <laughs> RuPaul used to be a lot shadier in the workroom than she is now like one time I don't know if it aired or not but um, I think Dax was like I can't sew I can't figure out how to thread the bobbin on the sewing machine or something. And RuPaul was like, oh. Hmm. Girl. I do not know if that made the air, but RuPaul like threaded her machine and was like, that's how you thread a machine. He was like, no. I was like, I was like, damn, she ate that. Um, this whole cold open was very upsetting. I don't, I don't like what Mirage is, not Mirage, Morphine is doing. I keep getting their names mixed up. Morphine, I don't like it. it it's it's upsetting. Me. It's it's just giving me the ick, for lack of a better term. I just don't 
want to see them do this is irritating. <laughs> because I'm not that laughing. Irritating. I'm like, I, I, were you, did you laugh? I, no, I did not. <laughs> So, I, I just feel like, I mean, okay, so before we get into it, would you have been more nervous to only have one take? Because for me, when I think about myself, like competing or just doing anything, if I know I only have one take, I'm going to go like literally like a thousand percent, like act a fool. But I think some girls get really nervous. I don't understand why these girls are acting like one take is crazy. First of all, you all are, you all have way more experience doing live performance than you do doing TV. Y'all just started doing TV. So like you have way more experience doing live. You, you every time you go to the club, you got one take. Every time you hit the every time you hit the stage, but you have one take. So just yeah, there are cameras rolling, but like just use the same energy you have when you're performing live. You're used to having one take, but when you hear this camera, it gets in your brain, and you're like, oh no, one take. I can't possibly do it. bitch. People on Broadway do it one take eight times a week, eight shows a week, one take. You can do one here now. I promise. Mm -hmm. I think y'all grew up doing community theater and school plays and re recitals and uh, violin classes and dance classes. Well, no, because they're trying to prove how dumb they are. They didn't go to school. <laughs> they're like, I'm so I'm so stupid. I didn't even go to school. <laughs> oh, you're a plain Jane hater. I can't. Next time I see all this, next time I see all this girl, I'm like, hey, shut, hey, what's up, dummy? Everyone acting dumb. Oh. Give her a moment. I think she'll come back. <laughs> also, we can just cut out all of these freezing or like goods. <laughs> girl, she be freezing so much. She's like, girl, from now on, everyone acting dumb. When I see them, I'm, I'm gonna be like, hey, what's up, dummy? What's up, dumb, dumb? You dumb bitch. No, you dumb, right? Oh, oh no, you want to be stupid. What's up with your <laughs> stupid ass? Oh, oh, you don't want to be no. stupid no more. You dumb motherfucking dummy. Wow, not you a bully. No, See, we need we, someone like we need. We need someone like who's your energy to challenge Plain Jane. Because like, if I was in, if I was in the building, I, when I see someone picking on someone else, I will be the first one to go. Excuse me. Oh, literally, this was this was me and Derek when Derek was coming. If I mean, season one untucked, episode one of season eight untucked, when Derek was coming for Brittany, Jesus, Derek's coming for Naomi. And then I was like, well, now I got to come for Derek. Like, why are you teasing this bitch? She's down in the dumps. She thinks she's in the fucking bottom. Leave this bitch alone. Now I got to come for you. Which is why I really appreciate when Plasma said, baby, let's untangle your arm hairs and that bracelet before you start trying to read people. I was like, Plasma, you a real one for that. Plasma's kind of an, mm -hmm. Plasma is an annoying theater kid. And theater kid, annoying kids. New York City, like, didn't make it on Broadway. So I ended up in the nightclubs. Uh, drag queens are very irritating. And I know a lot of them. And they are just kind of an irritating breed of people. Like, they are just so annoying. I mean, no shade. They're just so irritating. Can you but name she, me some? N uh, n <laughs> no. Can you but name, like, I'm trying to see what you're saying. Let's just say they weaponize their BFAs, and they are, and they are, uh, they are. Okay, these, okay so Jan, Jan and Rose. Okay, let's. <laughs> <laughs> these theater kids who become theater adults. Um, because they were like stars in their community. I, yo, am I being like too much today? They were like stars. I believe you're reading. She's they like, y'all were, like, were stars, stars. Well, when, when you were freshly born, you were stars then. But when, no. we're in the real world now. Well, in their community theater scene, they were like that. They were like, I'm, bitch, I'm the community theater queen, honey. I ate my high school play. And then you got to New York City, you're like, oh my God, this is a different place. It's not just enough to have the singing or whatever. Anyway, long story short. What I'm saying was plasma. You ate that, and honestly, you kind of swayed my opinion on you, plasma. I ate that. You you ate that. I was really I was very much gagged when she called out playing Jane for her little hair is caught in her bracelet. That was quick. Um, so as as soon as also so actually my first chuckle I didn't allow I chuckled was at um was at um Mirage. I thought Mirage's reads were reads and jokes were actually pretty decent. They were, I wasn't like it wasn't knee slapping, but they were pretty decent though. Are you okay? So, do you believe that the edit plays a part in the show? Because, like, for instance, when I'm watching Mirage hosting the show, I feel like if they would have added a laugh track, they, it would have been funny to the audience. But I feel like I they can like kind of like push it to wherever they want the narrative to be. Again, they I'm not one to blame on the edit. I think the I think the producers and whoever the powers that be do a great job at showing it as it plays out. But realistically, watching it, I'm like they could have made it funny for the audience if they wanted to. The producers of RuPaul's Drag Race are masters at their craft. And this is not even up for debate. Legit, some of the best 
reality TV producers in the history of television, and they, and they literally have the awards to prove it. They are masters of their craft. They are literally changing the way that reality TV happens. That being said, they could have made that bitch funny if they wanted to. If they wanted her to be funny, she could have been funny. And, I agree. And, and the moment she stumbled on that RuPaul line, RuPaul the live, I was like, it's a wrap. The fact that she stumbled, I was like, the fact that's in there and that she stumbled, yeah. I know they're gonna they're gonna sink her fucking battleship. Yeah. Together. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and what else do we have going on? Um, also, can I just say, did RuPaul have one take? Not not too much on mother. I know she did all that in one take with no practice. <laughs> they just said fill the gaps. I'm obsessed with the image of RuPaul rehearsing. Like I'm obsessed with the idea of RuPaul rehearsing. I I need to see it. I need to be there to see RuPaul out of drag. Girl. Does she wear shoes? Does she wear does she is does she a girl who rehearses in heels? I don't know. I'm just obsessed. Um, uh, I, I also RuPaul. I, this is actually my favorite uh, RuPaul performance on the show. I I really actually this is my favorite performance of RuPaul and of all performances on the show. This is well, I like the one where she was like, no, this 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 is actually my favorite one. She did it. She looked amazing. Um, um, so the the little weekend update bit was actually pretty funny. I I thought they were doing a really good job. These these queens were doing a really good job with that. It was a uh, uh, Dawn and her her friend. Who's her friend? A mandatory reading. Dawn and a mandatory reading. There we go. They they did a pretty good job. I wasn't as blown away by this brick performance as everyone else was. I thought it was good. It was it was it was it was, it was solid. It was solid. I'll give her that. It was it was it was actually pretty solid. Um, the barbershop quartet was the highlight for me of the whole Most thing. Definitely. And I and I do think it's because of plasma. Like plasma is the reason why, for me, the barbershop and also Nymphia <clears throat> being so bad at it. Like I was like, I don't know if Nymphia knows who Barbara Streisand is. Like I don't think Nymphia has a reference point for 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 Babs. Plasma tour of it, it was so sickening, and I feel like like kind of like they said that one was the hardest role to do live singing anyway, mm-hmm. and I feel like everything was fabulous. Um, I also thought Plain Jane and Mirage were funny. I feel like I feel like it was like cutesy. Oh yeah, Plain Jane, Plain Jane, and not Mirage, Plain Jane and, and Mirage. Mirage. Sorry, what? Uh, Megami. Megami. There's a lot of M's. Mirage, Megami, Morphine. Uh-huh. They, they all get mixed up. So they were, yeah, they were, they were, they were fine. I, I do think they, I do think they overpraised Plain Jane. I was like, she not not on her look. Her look was immaculate. Mm-hmm. We'll get there. Her look was fucking phenomenal. But I think in the in in the in the um. The acting in the sketch, they kind of overpraised her. Uh, and that actually sketch, that sketch was actually written, written very well. I want to say that out loud to the, to the writers. That that long, long hard deck sketch was actually written very well. It was give, it was very much giving um uh, Betty White's uh, muffin, <laughs> uh, sketch, which was really really good. So let's go ahead and start talking about some of these looks, shall we? Yes, baby. Um, this runway, I would have loved to have this. Everyone was feathered and beaded, and it was. Drag for the, uh, most of them. Yeah, <laughs> most I mean, of RuPaul, them. RuPaul looked really great. I love RuPaul's look. I love this uh, this pantsuit. Um, this fabric looks so fucking expensive. These like giant paillettes, and obviously Michelle's been looking like a million bucks lately. Everyone looked great actually. I mean, tens mm-hmm. of I, I feel like Ruth's hair could have been like a little bigger, like an updo. But I love the Maybe hair. Updo been fierce though. Yeah. Let's go on to uh, Tsunami, uh, who is a prisoner share. I didn't know this this character's called Prisoner or this picture, but she looks great. Tsunami looks really good. Tsunami's ass. It's from her song. It was like the cover of her song, Prisoner. Got it. Tsunami's ass looks really amazing. And she's not padding. That's like that's she has, that's her skin. I was like, girl, her ass looks great. Good for her. The costume is sickening. You know, I love a bead. And with hers, so this is like so so tedious, like detail oriented. I love how you can tell it's it's hand beaded, not the beaded trim. Because you know when has when it's beaded trim, you can see the lines and how it how it goes. You'll see it on on morphines, but like I, the the costume is like super expensive. No, you'll see it on morphines. Wow. No, morphine looks sickening, but there's a difference between like the trim oh, and like the hand beaded. <laughs> All of it's still expensive, babe. <laughs> 
Tsunami looks sickening. So let's go on to uh, let's go on to pre beaded, um, <laughs> less expensive beaded trim. Beaded trim. Let's go into Morphine, who's doing uh, Share at the 1988 Academy Awards. This look is so good on Share. It's mm-hmm. good on Morphine. Can we talk about is is Morphine like opposed to a corset? Is she just like never? Is it? Like, is she? Is she like what? Because she didn't get her body done, which she's very proud of. So is she like? Well, I'm she not- can't. She can't wear a corset because she couldn't waist train because her parents don't know. That's why she went with the BBL because that one's a little more like private to do. <laughs> it's a little more s- sneaky to do a BBL <laughs> yeah. than it is to wear a corset. <laughs> Um, but like, mom, even, mom, I'm just thick. But even without the uh, even without the corset, she looks good. This is a really good look. Even with the pre- always on point. The, the, the trim, the, the pre done beaded trim, it's still <laughs> sickening. What, what do you think of this one? I think that she looks sickening. I think that I, I don't. I mean, the corset, yeah, of course. But I don't think she's given like hog body. I think she looks nice, especially with right. the way that the um, the beads at the bottom or the the pearls are like the way that the the um. It's it's like ruched almost kind of. It's like it's giving shape to her leg. So I think it looks fine. She looks great. It looks exp- expensive as fuck. So go to Maya Monlapay. Choosing share promoting burlesque is camp. I don't care what anyone says. This is the funniest fucking thing that's happened on the whole fucking episode. When you say what share look do you want to do, and then you say share promoting burlesque, this is the funniest fucking thing that I have heard the entire better than her share impersonation. Choosing when you look through Cher's catalog, when you look through the looks, the beads, the Bob Mackie, the feathers, the headdresses, when you look at the stones, the crystals, the fishnet, the mesh, and you say, I want to do Cher promoting burlesque, you're a fucking comedic genius, and I don't care what anyone says about you. You know, (laughs) first of all, let me say this. This is my sister, but I'm gonna be honest. This looks a mess. Only like it just looks so pedestrian. But I will say this: here's some insider tea. So I knew Maya was going to Drag Race before she went, and we were helping her get her together. So I, I think she discussed it on the show. But basically, she had um, one designer making her a bunch of looks, and he goes to her last minute, so she didn't get her runways. So Ooh. this is literally probably something that she had like in her closet. So Damn. I hate it is that. what it is. We're judging what's on stage, but yeah, they she. That's that's why she's so in her head too because she's like, girl, I knew I was the fool. And Do you I want to say the designer's name? I personally don't know. Or I would blast them. She didn't say that part. Yeah, but that that that, that is bullshit. I had one designer skip out on me on one outfit. Like I, I I actually made the outfit and I gave it to him to paint it, and then he brought it back to me the day before I was going to leave, and he goes, I couldn't do it. I, was, oh I got my God. But, he, but he didn't even tell me. He brought it back. I was like, oh, you're bringing the, the dress back. It's going to be my final look. This is the look I'm going to walk down the runway in at the on the last episode. He brought the bag. He hands me the bag. It is literally the same way I folded it when I gave it to him. He was like, it was too much stress. I just didn't do it. That's oh crazy. Could have worn him the whole time. Didn't warn me. We said we we ended up becoming friends and after it, we I got over it, but I was fucked up. You know, this look does not look good. She does look a mess and and I, I really think that she was scrambling, clearly trying to find a way to connect this look to anything. And they chose share promoting burlesque. That shit. This is camp. This is <laughs> camp. Let's go. <laughs> let's go on to Geneva Carr as uh, Cher, uh, um, as working for um, as this, 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 the Ringling, this, the ringmaster for uh, Ringling Circus um, in '74. You know. This middle part, I don't like. I mean, um, Michelle called it out, but this middle part is really unforgiving. And I feel like the fact that the hat doesn't have the feathers on it makes the hat look so cheap. This hat low key looks like one of those uh, St. Patrick's Day hats that you find with the, with, the, with the with the sticker dots on it, but in red. I again, I'm trying to judge with just what we're seeing, and I, I think also we should be forgiving on on money, of course, and things that go into play, but for me, as someone who knows Geneva, I know Texas Drag, I know the people who are around her, all the resources, we should not be wearing Disco Dot on the runway. Unforgivable. Yeah, Disco, when I saw Disco we Dot, I like It could have been sequin, uh, and, and sequin this day is not that expensive. Someone would have got it for her. I think that this is like the fool. It's but true. I think even, even fabric even, in 2024 is almost the same price, if not a little more, than disco dots. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I think that even if you, even if Disco Dog was like the only thing, I think it would look better in like a latex or like something a little more forgiving. I think it just looks so cheap. It's given like Halloween costume. Or just do a different look. Do a look that doesn't require sequins. Just do something. Th- Not everything Sherry wears has sequins and stones. Do something different. Do do share but, promoting. Do share promoting. Um, <laughs> promoting Mamma Mia. What what is your where she promoted Mamma Mia? <laughs> Girl, shut up. <laughs> but look, she said she was blushed like Cher. She was <laughs> blushed like Cher. Cher, Cher promoting Moonstruck. Cher promoting. <laughs> How about do do share walking her dog? Girl. Do, do, do one of the obscure share looks. <laughs> Let's go on to um, But also before we move on for Geneva, what sends me to is baby, if you see that boot, she knows she's lip syncing. She the <laughs> the look is like a black strappy <laughs> dance boot. I said, girl, can we at least pretend can we have at least put on the red hill? She said, Oh yeah, let me put on the old faithfuls. She said, "I've been done, been new. I'm about to be bucking. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to do my little jump, my little jump twist split. I gotta put on my <laughs> jump twist shoes, honey." Um, let's go on to uh, Mirage, who's doing Sharon concert in 1979. I love this look, and I was not as offended by the the hair decade swapping. Obviously, I don't know that it was more of sh- her trying to do a different share look as much as her doing her hair the way she does her hair. It's clear to me that I don't know that Mirage knows how to put on a lace front wig. Mirage seems to just be using her hair all the time. And then Mirage is probably a queen who just does pieces, bangs, ponytails, buns, clips, and probably doesn't know how to put on a lace front wig. A lot of, a lot of queens don't actually know how to, some of them, not, we don't all have, we're not always blessed with this much real estate. We're not all blessed with wow. this much play area. Can't relate. Can't I mean, relate. Uh, yeah, she does always use her regular hair. Um <laughs> Whose dog is that, girl? I don't, I don't. I'm back. That's in your part. I'm back. I think it's it's in your, on your side, mistress. You said what? I think that I dog is on back. your side. On my side. There's not. A, I don't hear a dog here, and I don't think there's oh, a, you can, you a can, dog. Can you hear it from? Can you hear it from my from like my microphone? Mm-hmm. No, it was just a little briefly for a moment, but it's all good. Okay, cool. Like Thor, Thorgy didn't know how to put on a lace front wig when I met her, and I remember like Ginger didn't know how to put on a lace front wig for a long time because she was like spraying her hairline. So not every queen is in these streets putting on lace. So I, I don't know that it was, I don't think that it was necessarily her trying to swap eras, but even still, I was with, the, I like it. I think she looks really good. This is actually one of my favorite looks on the runway, if I'm being honest. I would say top Yeah, top I think four. she looks. I think she looks great. I love the color. I love all like the different types of uh, materials and textures in it. I think that the hair is really nitpicking, but I also understand why. Cause like, it's kind of one of those things, like obviously Rue is a huge share fan and I'm sure everyone on the panel is. So when it comes down to the nitty gritty, like to, when it comes down to the nitty gritty, but that's what I was saying. Like it's one of those things where if y'all wanted to, y'all would forgive it. Like it's not, I feel like y'all are just putting what needs to be to justify the bottom placement. But do you remember when, um, when I don't know how well you remember this, when Britta Filter got sent home, they were like, "This look is stunning," but these earrings, <laughs> you fucking ugly monster! Why the <laughs> fuck would you even wear these earrings with this outfit, you dumb bitch? Now you're in the bottom. As Aiden Zane's contact is like rotating in her <laughs> eye, they're, they're like, they're like, but it's, they're like, girl, you just had a bad week. It's okay. <laughs> um, so it, it, it was giving that for me. Um, we should go on to Megami. This look is almost flawless. There is one thing about this look, and it's that the rhinestones, the hairline are, are distracted. I was like, is she wearing a headband? What the fuck is going on? But besides that, this look is probably one of the most recreated looks in drag history. We, everyone knows the queen who has this look. We've seen this look on Drag Race, I think literally maybe four or five times. And it looks good. She looks good. Her hair looks good. Her face looks good. Her body looks good. The outfit looks good. The attitude when she walks looks good. I think she looks great. What do you think? She looks good. I think the mug is a little like not rough, but I think the makeup needs to be like a little more like softer. She needs to nibble on some fish food. But great. I think that <laughs> but also I'm looking at this and I guess what spoiled it for me is Low-key, my sister Maya was kind of wearing the same thing. What is separating this from Maya's? 
I okay. I think that Maya was going for this, but it was so far off base, and Megami's <laughs> was so close to it that, they, that the producers were like, "We gotta give you something." So, <laughs> Cher promoting burlesque because when I saw Maya come out, I was like, "This looks like Cher in If I Could Turn Back Time," but mm. but a really bad version of it. So, like, what? I don't. I don't believe that that was ever intended to be. Fucking, but that, but that's what I'm saying. She went and she probably told them, "Girl, my outfits did not come." They said, "Wear this, wear this, and get and get your life." So I, I'm just saying, the it, it all adds up. But yeah, I, I think it looks like they were going for the same thing. Megami definitely looks fabulous. I love the hair. The body's right. It looks good. Share promoting burlesque is the funniest. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh my god, it's so good. Let's go into Plain Jane, um, 1974 Met Gala. Uh, Share. This look is stunning. She looks amazing. The only critique I have is that her hair goes back and falls down as opposed to falling from the side. Because Cher's hair doesn't go back and then fall down. Cher's hair is split right down the middle. That is literally the only thing. And that, and that is that I am digging for something to say about this look. Because this look is amazing. Yeah, she looks sickening. I, I love everything. And I love also she kind of made it even more draggy. Like there's more feathers and more detailing on it, so she looks sickening. Like I think this is my favorite runway look. I agree. She looks absolutely stunning. Let's go on to Amanda Tori reading. She is the shared doll, and Amanda is just I. We love Amanda, but you know, a queen. You just look at her and you're like, something is just. It's always something. <laughs> it's, it's always. This is giving. This is giving me Selena Quintanilla. This is not giving me Cher. But also, like, the way that her boobs are just, like, her boobs are, like, up on her collarbones. Like, her boobs are just so high that they just don't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Your boobs don't make any sense. But, you know, for me also, and this is uh, I, I, for tip and trick to all the girls who want to do, like, runway or something very important and you still want to wear a bang wig. I think when you wear a hard front bang wig, you can still tell it's a hard front. I think if you get a lace front where like the sides go like back to show the hairline a little bit and cut bangs into it, the wig will look a little bit nicer. And I feel like the wig kind of downplays it because the outfits like the outfit looks nice. I think that the top could be a little more structured. That way, like you said, it's not like riding up. Mm -hmm. But I, I just feel like there's little detailings that obviously will come as she progresses in her drag career. You know what you could also do? You can get a lace front wig and then just get a clip on bang. Put it on the top and a clip on bang will give you it. Also, it's way, it's mm -hmm. always way more full. It's way fuller. It just looks more expensive. And based on the way you're moving, you can still see that you have like hair attached to your head. Unless you're wearing a bob. If you're wearing a bob, it can be one piece. Like a, if you're wearing a bob, you don't need clip on bangs for a bob. Don't buy a split down the middle bob and then clip bangs in because you're gonna be you gonna come back and say Adora. mistress and bob told me to get a bang piece for my bob and that's not what we said we did not say that <laughs> we did not say that the little door of the explorer yeah um, let's go on to uh dawn who's doing mod share um who decided to take a this uh picture share in 1966 and like add some color to it which i really love that idea for dawn something about dawn though she's kind of like really she is coasting Dawn is, and for a queen to look as uh, unique as she does and have such a unique perspective on their visual, I've never seen a queen like her. Well, that's not true because Trixie was low key coasting on her first season of Drag Race and then got sent home. So we actually have seen it. So I, I fully lied. But she, was she, oh, she, my God. Trixie was coasting. Trixie knows she was coasting. Um, I hate looks like this where they take off one piece and then the outfit looks incomplete to me. Like when, when she took off like the top, like um, like puffer part. And it was just like the white tank top looking bodysuit. I didn't like that. I think she wanted to show off her body, but I don't know why she would take off the most impressive piece of the outfit. Like, imagine mm -hmm. if you were wearing like a rhinestone cat suit, and then underneath you had on you had on like a, just a plain back like Capizio leotard, and then you revealed. So you're like, why would you? Why would you do that? Why would you take off the most impressive part <laughs> and reveal to a white pair of bell bottom cat? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't. That that, that was wild. That was a wild move. <laughs> Bold move, Dawn. Bold move. She's like, you liked it? How about now? Yeah, we're like, eh, less, <laughs> less. Gotta be honest. <laughs> um, let's go on to uh, Q, 
who did uh, Sunny and Cher. Can I give a hot take on Q? Q is a great costume designer who started, who ended up doing drag. But I don't know that Q is, Q seems like, if, like if I went to like, to some like theater and like, hey, when I costume designer Q, she's a drag queen too. And she does these crazy, like, and, she, and I feel like if it seems like Q, like Q's performance started a little later than her costuming is what is it, what I'm saying. She definitely, because her costuming is crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm actually surprised you know, that we don't know about Q as a designer in the, in the in the drag world already. To be honest, I, I mean, I thought her talent show was was really good. I think that maybe she did start her 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 performance after, and she had she she obviously before dabbled in costuming and and sewing before drag, like she said. But that's not even the first thing I worry about. Every time I see her, I'm like, girl, your face has to hurt. Her face is so pulled. Like her he's face little, is snatched. He's a little, he's a, little a scotch <laughs> taut. She looks thickening. It looks beautiful in and out of drag. But I'm like, girl, like it's given like pulled. How old Costume is Costume thickening. I probably, I don't know. I would okay. say 20s. Her eye makeup is so interesting because her eye makeup, like her whole eye is white. Like this, everything. Uh, like It feels like it's above it, it's below it. Like, the whole thing is white. And then she just does, like, the tiniest... She is 27. Oh, work. And then she does the tiniest amount of eyeshadow in this... I kind of like it. White spot. I've, n- I've never seen anyone's makeup like that. I've, I've never seen makeup like this before. Thank you, Jacob. I've just never seen makeup like that before. But I don't I don't hate it at all. Um, We have uh, two more. Let's go on to Plasma, who is doing Met Gala 1985, the year before I was born. Plasma is eating this episode. This win was so deserved. She looks so good. She looks truly amazing. Like, she looks good. The fuck good. Good for her. Yeah. And, and it's like her own take on it. It's not an exact replica. It's a take on the garment, which I which I like as well. I was about to say, so for the Night of a Thousands, do you like an interpretation or do you want a replica? <sighs> It depends on the look, to be honest. Like on this, I don't mm-hmm. mind. I don't mind. Like if she, if someone would, if someone would have done like uh, if I could turn back time share as a gown, I've never seen that look before. Like a gown with like a leather jacket, I've never seen that look before. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have minded that. But as long as your interpretation is fierce, and but this is like a slight interpret. But then you go back up to Geneva, who did an interpretation where she added sleeves, and this is I don't, I don't want to see that. That's not the kind of interpretation I want to see. <laughs> yeah, like. I like I'm I'm looking at this. I love the look. She looks amazing. She looks stunning. But then I, I look at the reference picture and like the reference picture is giving me like very like regal, like old school, like Texas drag pageant. And I'm just like, I feel like it could have been done a little by adding just a little bit more like gold into it and make it a little more structured. But she still looks sickening. She looks amazing. Um, let's go on to Nymphia, who is Egyptian goddess here. She kept being she kept saying I'm Egyptian. I kept being like, Can you stop? Stop <laughs> saying she said like eight times. I'm Egyptian. I'm, so Egyptian. I'm an Egyptian. I was like, stop <laughs> saying that. Jesus Christ. But she looks good though. She looks, I mean, this isn't like particularly like remarkable because it's so there's so little going on. It's very much giving Bosco tees. <laughs> I can see Bosco wearing this. Uh-huh. Um, and I think the only thing I don't hate it, but like when you wear a two piece, but you're not a skin queen. The disconnect between your tights and your midsection is so jarring. Now, when you when it's your when it's your arms and your legs, that I can vibe with. But when it's your legs and your belly button, because they're so close, they're like a few inches apart from each other. It, it's really like, what's happening? Hmm. Yeah, I I think looks like that. Like again, that goes back to this experience with like doing things like that because you could have easily made like a nude illusion under or got one of those like um drag bodysuits that are like airbrush that would look really cool with this look just to elevate it a little bit more and like airbrush a little like six pack on and last but not least we have Safira Cristal who's doing a share from her Vegas residency in 2017 2017 and I think this look is great she even made it even bigger than Cher had it it actually looks a lot more appropriate on her than it does on Cher quite frankly <laughs> um and she looks really good this is a this is a great and and I wasn't upset when she took the coat when she took the thing off. I wasn't upset because she wasn't wearing a plain white leather underneath it. Agreed. No, yeah, she looks um, she looks amazing. Like literally, no critiques. Everything looks stunning. Looks yeah. expensive. 
Money. Has some good dragon. I feel like people didn't give enough credit to how smart and great her her Eve look was in the last episode. To mm-hmm. Sephira is and that pumpkin look was insane. And Monet was like, "It's just inflatable." Like, girl, it's this is a Sephira is pretty consistent turning out some very remarkable drag on this show. Mm-hmm. Even though she's not about the drama, she's getting pushed to the side. But I think she might be the most real, the most well rounded queen on this season. See, but that's my thing. I feel like when you consistently deliver, people just become accustomed to it. And I feel like that's the territory she's beginning to enter. Like, uh, okay, Sophia, like another like sickening look. Mm-hmm. But like if you have like a one-off week, then then it's like more like, oh my God, she turned it this week. But if you're turning it continuously, it's kind of like I mean, expected. the bar is lower. I mean, the bar is lowered for the girls who like if a mandatory meeting comes at the finale looking like everyone else looks all the time, they'll be like, Can you believe a mandatory meeting is now literally the new diva of beauty and glam i just hope that sapphira wants to like prove that she could be dumb she needs to start fitting in with the girls and she's, not the dumb narrative. Enough. she's not nearly dumb enough not nearly stupid enough so <laughs> let's so uh what was your favorite look of the week plain jane i think she killed it everything was perfect it's like I, I would make a little change of the hair but everything was perfect i agree and what's your least favorite look of the week <sighs> i have to give it to maya Girl, Maya, I thought it was ditto. unforgivable. <laughs> ditto. My, shout out to Maya. I'm sorry about your designer, but baby, that's the way. The cookie, that's the way the cookie had done crumbled. Now we find out that the uh, that the, the the bottom two queens are going to be Geneva and Mirage, and Plasma wins. Plasma is crying like she just won a fucking Tony Award. <laughs> I mean, it's it's emotional, but also like it's one thing to cry on stage, but you're crying in the confessional. You won four days ago. <laughs> Why do I know she was crying? Because I don't care. I don't care who convinced her what. I know in her head, she still was like, they tried to get me together and I proved them wrong. I know she's still living in that fantasy. I don't care what anyone says. I know she still is against the girls. She thinks the girls are trying to get her. She's crying because she's joyous. She, she came out victory, honey. She was victorious. She's frozen. Let's give her. Oh, there she's back. I oh, love that. Yeah, she is like everyone. If I free, just just finish her for her. She was like everyone doubted me, and now look at me holding an a Tony Award. Like like she <laughs> is. She's so honestly, she's so corny that I that I'm like I'm kind of into it again. Like like you know, who's another theater kid who was corny, but I really like them. Uh, Alex Michelle on All Stars. Alex Michelle on All Stars. She was so corny, but it was charming because I don't I can't explain it. Something about. The way that Alex, Michelle, and Plasma are corny is different than the way Rosé is corny. It's not the same thing, if that mm-hmm. makes any sense. You know? Agreed. Um, I, I I wouldn't have put Mirage in the bottom because I liked her look. And I actually thought that she wasn't one of the worst people in the challenge. I think it's weird that she's in the bottom. I think no shade. I think it should have been Maya and Mon LePage because her look was so bad like it was like so bad and her and her character was also like decent like it wasn't like i wasn't laughing it was just like it was halfway decent so, but they also know that you cannot put anyone in the bottom whoever you at least the first like two or three times you cannot put someone in the bottom with maya and then expect them to stick around I do I feel like maybe also her interaction with Rue saved her because like even in the challenge you're like oh well at least Maya's beginning to try to open up and like when what did you think about her share impersonation? I mean it was horrible. <laughs> like I started to be like, has she ever even heard share speak? Like what? <laughs> what is? What is that? I think that like carried her over. I feel like Rue was like, okay, let's keep her around. I mean maybe maybe because she. No shade, Mirage. I mean, Maya, baby, you should have been in the bottom. That look, that, that this episode was not a great one for you. And we put Mirage and, and Geneva in the bottom. And at one point, I'm like, wow, Geneva, like Mirage about to eat Geneva up. And she does the, she pulls the cardinal sin. She doesn't know the words. I am devastated. I am destroyed because I know, I'm watching this this lip sync knowing the whole time she's about to fucking go home Mm -mm. and it is what it is you know i i I agree i'm glad that they they made the right decision at the end of the day it is a lip sync i think you do need to know the words and 
you know, it's it's unfortunate because I, I was really liking Mirage. I th- I would have loved to see Mirage longer, but I think Geneva also, you know, she she held her own. She I also I just hate, I I think like the little like splits and everything. Like as someone who does splits and kicks and where it needs to be, I hate a random split. I hate a random like trick. I think it's so tired. Oh yeah, a, sp- a split in, in 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 Dark Lady is crazy. A split in Dark Lady is crazy. <laughs> Dark Lady left and splits and did the candles one by one. What? Okay, sure. In her head, she was hearing whip cracks. And and uh, and, and and RuPaul and the well, not well, RuPaul last now, but the judges, the special guest judge, every time. <laughs> Okay, girl. Sure. Um, yes, mama. So um, Geneva wins the lip sync. Gen- uh, Mirage is sent home, and Mirage is not taking it. Is, it is genuinely hard to watch. It was genuinely very hard to watch. She just collapsed. She 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 left. And she was like, I didn't make anyone proud. Mirage, that is not true. You made so many of us proud, and I hope you know that. Yeah, you know, I I live for a queen who just, like, walks off. Like, a queen who, like, lives in their emotions. Like, I'm sorry, you could do no wrong. Even, like, Dahlia Sin. When Dahlia Sin walked off, I, I thought it was sickening. When, I mean, Mirage gave, like, a little thank you. But I, I feel like reality TV, this, that's what's so special about Drag Race is, like, just convey your feelings. And it's a lot of emotion when you compete. You waited so long for the opportunity. So I understand Mirage and also... Just like they said, it's just the beginning and everything happens for a reason, in my opinion. Yeah. Also, preparing an exit line is crazy. I've said this before on the show. Going to drag race with an exit line is crazy. That's crazy. Who's going to drag race with a fucking exit line? That's insane. Even mm-hmm. if you have, even if you accept when you get there that you won't win, the fact that you went there with a plan for losing is crazy to me. I agree. I, I, baby, I didn't even think about my entrance line. <laughs> well, shout, shout, shout out to Mirage for not having an exit line and just walking off the fucking stage. All right, y'all. Thank you all for joining us here on, on uh, Silving Watchery. Big shout out to Mr. Isabel Brooks. You just got off tour, but are you doing anything in Houston? Where can they see you? Are you, are you doing any shows, any, any local gigs? Are you, are, you, are you like the Cats 16 and you're no longer a local girl? Do you also shit on local queens the way they did on Cats, Cats 16? So I am freshly home from work the world. You can see me sometimes in Houston at my home bar, South Beach. I throw a monthly party where I bring all of your favorite Rue girls. This uh, this month in February coming up, we have Donna Nymphia, February 9th, South Beach, Houston. But I'm going to be touring all over again on the weekends, doing my bookings all over. So if you want to see me in a bar at a club near you, just ask for mistress, baby. Let's get it together. Catch me on my YouTube. I just started releasing a whole bunch of online content. I have my podcast, Clock the Tea with MIB, coming very, very soon this February with my first special guest guest of my podcast miss monet exchange and listen right now live i'm gonna ask bob because she's been so funny we never got to clock the tea i i only came right now because monet asked me bob didn't want me to be a madonna he wanted aquaria there was a bunch of drama she went to diss me on the rap y'all see i went and bought this new microphone so she could not try me this is a fresh brand new microphone you got hear that crystal clear quality so bob come on the podcast asap we're going to finish a little, we're going to have a live little freestyle. We're going to get it together because oh. I don't like how you be dogging on me. So oh. we're going to get it together. This is me publicly challenging you. But make sure you follow me across all social media, um, YouTube, TikTok, everything. On TikTok, you got you to gotta find it because I'm shadow banned on fucking everything. But come, let's, <laughs> we're gonna, we'll it's see, always a good time. I will go there and I will dog you because let me tell you right now, you can only dog a dog. You can't dog a diva. All right. Ooh. We're, we're gonna try to outdo Megan and we're gonna try to outdo Megan and Nikki. We're gonna take over the rap beef. We're gonna keep it going. I know a bitch <laughs> like five four. She hit the split floor. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I had so much fun. And uh, girls, this last message: season sixteen girls watching all this. This don't mean nothing. Who are we? A bald bitch, and one of us is really sickening and has a lot of accolades. But baby, y'all still rude girls. Don't be talking about y'all. Y'all not local girls no more. Some of y'all will be local girls once again. But a ball <laughs> bitch and a bitch with accolades. Those, those, those were both me. Those were both me. What about you? Oh, oh. Anyways, bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>